Okay, geometry. This is going to be Chapter 9, Section 3, Rotations. I'm doing the Geometry Software Lab, so I'm going to use GeoGebra, and I'm going to reflect in intersecting lines and see what that does. So the first thing I need to do is construct a, a triangle ABC. So I need to grab my polygon tool, and I have my options set for labeling all new objects. So this would be triangle A, B, C. And then for ease of use, I am going to change like A to be like red and C to be, I don't know, green. And I can leave B as blue. Then we can see this a little bit better. Um, the next thing I need to do is construct lines M and N so they don't intersect um, inside the triangle. I want them to intersect outside the triangle. So I am going to grab a line tool and I'm going to create the first line. And then I'm going to create my second line. And I want those to be lines M and N, so I need to cancel, move D, grab. That wasn't what I wanted. Hold on. Okay, I've renamed this as line N and this is line M. I've got my lines intersecting here. They're intersecting outside of my triangle. My triangle is ABC. Um, I want to label the intersection point, so I need a point at the intersection, and I want that point to be point P. So once I've created it, um, first of all, I want it to be just a black point so it's not standing out, and second of all, I would like to name it point P. Okay. So there is my point P. And oops, my P can go wherever, so that's kind of neat. Um, and then whenever I move these around, point P stays on the line. My N stays on my line. My F stays on my line. And you can see all this stuff is kind of just constructed and married to itself. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start reflecting. So I want to reflect this triangle, and I probably need to move this down a little bit so that we can see what we've got going here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to reflect triangle ABC, and here's my reflection tool. Reflect this triangle across line N first. Actually, it says to reflect it across line M, so this is my line M. That puts it down there. It might be easier if I were to move this line up here a little bit so you can see this better. And then I'm going to retake the reflection. And notice this is called A prime, B prime, and C prime because um, it is a reflection. It's my image. I'm now going to reflect my image across line N. And there it lands over there. And notice this is A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. So I'll put this on pause, take a moment, and see if you can figure out what the relationship is between A, B, and C and between A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. Okay, hopefully you have looked at this and you've remembered our different transformations we've had so far. So we have had um, translations and we have had rotations. So this is definitely not a translation. I just didn't slide it right over here. But this is the same thing as if I were to rotate it around point P. Um, the only question is, how far did I rotate it? How many degrees rotation is this? So um, to make this easier to see, I'm going to put this back down. Oops, that kind of... Um, there we go. That's kind of okay. Trying to make it so that my lines don't all cross each other. So here, if I put that over there. Now you can see my angle. Mm. There we go. If I put that up there, it doesn't cross over the lines. Okay, so I want to do angle this triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C double prime. And I'm going to measure my acute angle. So this is my acute angle here. So, so to measure that angle, and sometimes I have trouble getting this tool to work properly, I'm going to pick my three points, E to P, 
Yep, it's going to go the wrong way. So let's go back and we'll go f to uh, f to p to e. Okay, let's try this again. F. Okay, hold on. F to p to e. That's the one I want. Okay, so there's my measurement, and that is my angle here, f p e. And if I grab that angle. I want to make it maybe like a purple. Okay, and then I'm going to start measuring my other angles that are created by this drawing. So if I measure um, A to P to A double prime, so I'm going to have to put some segments in there. So I'm going to grab my segment tool and go from A, and I want that to be red, to P, and from A double prime to P. And then I'm going to grab and let's see, go with green. And I'll go, oops, I didn't mean, let's turn that back to red. And since I'm here, I might as well measure the angle. So I'm going to measure from A to P, and that's the wrong part again. Let's try that again. From A double prime to P to B. And that is my A's, and they are red, so I'm going to make those red. That way you can see that and move that angle up there. So my A's are red and my angle measurement is red. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my B's and my B's are blue. So I'm going to create a segment. I want my segment to be blue. And I'll go from B to P and from B prime to B, B double prime to P. And then I'm going to measure that angle and I'm going to want that measurement to be in blue. And I'll go from B double prime to P to B. And I'll move that one off there so you can see it. So that's my angle for B. That's my angle for A. And then I can grab and do the last measurement. And you see that those two measurements are the same. So I need a segment and I'm going to make it green because I'm going to be measuring from C to P to C double prime. So I'll measure that angle and I want that angle to be measured in green. So C double prime to P to C. And you can see that that angle is also the same. And if I move this around, it stays the same degrees. If I move the B around, it stays the same degrees. If I move the A around, it stays the same degrees. Now if I change my angles here, you can see that it also changes all of my measurements. Okay, and that's pretty clear right there what the relationship is between these. If this is 80, these are 160. So go ahead and make a conjecture on what you think the relationship is between the acute angle formed by the two lines that you're reflecting across and the angle of reflection, or the angle of rotation, sorry, the angle of rotation formed from A all the way to A double prime. So the angle of rotation across two reflections and how they're related between the acute angle and the angle of rotation. Okay, so hopefully you came up with that the angle A P A double prime would be equal to 2 times the angle, and my acute angle is FP, oops, FPE. So my A to P to A double prime is going to be equal to 2 times my F to P to E, which is this 80. And that will always be true, no matter how I move this, so I can keep moving E. If I move it so that it's like 100 degrees, you see that's 200 degrees. If you see that it is right at 90 degrees, it's 180 degrees rotation. If we go up here to say 50 degrees, you can see it's 100 degrees. So it is always twice as much 